Oh, maybe we're already recording. Yeah, yeah that's what I was about to say, man. You're already recording, man. <laughs> this it's is going to be a good This is going to be a good This is going to be a good conversation. I can I can tell. <laughs> Yes. Happy birthday. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much, man. Yeah, it's a big five seven today. Man, uh, I realize you just got back from Mexico and then you hit me up and you said, listen, we saw God do all this crazy stuff. And uh and 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 I was like, we we have to talk about it. And um, but this is all I had available on my schedule. And so the fact that you were willing to carve time out on your birthday. And it is, is a big deal. So, so thanks for making oh, time for this. Oh, man, listen, you're the one that's jumping through the hoops. Thank you. Really, really and truly, man. Thank you. You know, I, I hope that everybody knows, you know, I hope that all of your peeps know that you actually do what you say you're going to do, <laughs> and, which is rare in a pastor. And uh, we know that pastors do not have any character whatsoever. We don't trust <laughs> any of them. I'm a pastor and you're a pastor. So, <laughs> right. you know, so, so we but, can talk trash, right? Yeah, exactly. We can just talk <laughs> trash, but uh, really and truly, man, the bottom line is, man, you guys have supported us and helped us. And man, you're, you're my very good friend and I just love you, man. And I appreciate you so much. I love your church, by the way. I love your church. It's hey, one of my favorite. Hey, we, we, we love you. And, uh, you know, I think based off of what we're going to be talking about today, uh, our tribe, they know you, they love you, but, uh, I think because of the subject matter, people are going to stumble onto this video where perhaps they have no idea who we are and they have no idea who, who you are. And uh, so for people that are just jumping onto this, uh, my name is Darren Stott. I'm, I'm a pastor of a church in the Seattle area called Eden. God's doing really cool stuff. You can check us out on EdenMovement.org. Uh, but this is uh, Troy Brewer. And now I met uh, Troy in Leanna just before COVID, just before the, the pandemic. And so we went into a a friendship forged by fire. We have a bit of a of a glorious trauma bond. And uh and so we got to go through the pandemic together and 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 through that the pandemic didn't ruin our ministries. It catapulted uh, uh ministry. And when I met you, uh Pastor Troy, you told me a story about how uh you were in Mexico with your with your bride and uh, I think you were in Mexico. I, I might I might mess this up, but basically the bottom line is somebody came up to you and tried to sell you a child, and they said this would be your child. You can do whatever you want with this child. You can make you can make a movie, and and you were so stunned. You were so shocked by this. You had no idea. You know you'd heard about this stuff, but all of a sudden you were being offered a child, and that radically changed the trajectory of your lives to the point where now. You guys have saved over 10,000 uh, children out of sexual trafficking and, and other forms of trafficking as well. Did I did I get that? Did I get that right? Or did I completely botch that that story? <laughs> well, no, uh, I'm sure you saw something on the Internet somewhere at some time. <laughs> and that was somebody's true story. But I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm just teasing. <laughs> I'm just teasing. No, that's true. I was. Uh, you know, if we're going to get technical, I was in Costa Rica and okay. somebody offered us, we were doing a, we were starting food banks there. We, we build food banks all over the planet earth. And we tend to do that near trash dumps. And, uh, there in that place, this was 28, 29 years ago. Um, and this lady brought me these two little Nicaraguan refugee children and, um, offered, offered them to me. And I couldn't believe it. So, it, so she thought I was a sexual tourist and sexual tourism is a really big thing. And because I was a middle-aged white guy stomping around in this really bad part of the world, they couldn't imagine anybody was there to do anything other than something, uh, something really sinister or nefarious. And uh, no, we were there to build food banks. And so I just said, yeah, how much? We negotiated a deal and we built a home for those kids and uh, watch those two little girls grow up. And, uh, you know, the, they grew up, they got married, they went to college, they got married, they've had their own babies, and uh, they're doing great. And uh, their kids are getting big now. So yeah, that was how it actually all, all got started. Isn't that, man, I, I love that. I love that story. And, uh, and you know how it is. Sometimes people will start a video like this, and they'll get into it. And then they'll, they'll watch it for five minutes and come back. So or they might not come back. So right off the bat, guys, this is Troy 
stinking brewer okay <laughs> this is the man the myth and the legend pastor uh, of the open door church um and the leader of this open door experience and movement and and pastor troy it's odx.com is that odx tv it is it's odx.tv that's what it is odx okay. open door experience Okay, so odx.tv, and we'll put that in the in the show notes so people can check it out. And that's a big deal. And the reason why it's a big deal is because you guys, Pastor Troy, he's he's one of these guys that lives to hear and obey God's voice. And he is trying to find, he's trying to discern God's voice amongst all of the data that's out there. So this guy is hearing God's voice through the stars. He is obsessed with the constellations and God's creation. Uh, he is hearing God's voice through numbers, um, through uh, through news broadcasts. And uh, what he's done, he and his team, they've created this platform, ODX.TV, and it's all of this prophetic content. It's all of this content of here are all the ways that God is speaking on the earth. And they are literally just taking in. He's got a whole team. They're taking in data all, all, all day long. And then Troy sits there and he's praying into it. He's hearing God's voice. So they create this platform of, of, of all this data from heaven that God is speaking on the earth. And then what they do is, is th there's a small subscriber fee, but then all of this money is used to go and to save uh, children out of trafficking. And so uh, I just wanted to just mention that right off the bat, because right now people are, they're trying to discern God's voice amongst all of the noise that's out there. Um, but what I love about it is here's a ministry that you can partner with. You can be fed. And while you're receiving God's word, you're actually uh, contributing towards the rescuing of children. So I just wanted to start off uh, our conversation, Pastor Troy, just by kind of introducing who you are and what you're doing to people that are stumbling onto this onto this video. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yep. All that's legit. So here we go. All right, let's do it. All right, dude. So you just got back from this redemption road trip, and this is the second one that you've done. In fact, you guys, you guys, it feels like you just did a redemption road trip. Is that right? <laughs> It is. Yes, sir. We, um, well, last year I was invited to speak to Congress. I spoke at the International Summit Against Human Trafficking in D.C. And uh, it was really a game changer. And because at the same time that that was happening, the movie Sound of Freedom was coming out. Now, for those of us that have been doing this for decades and we're about to cross into our th into our third decade. So we're about to complete 30 years now of of rescuing kids. It was a game changer for us because it was it's a lot like the book Uncle Tom's Cabin. Once that came into the popular culture, people begin to speak about it for the first time and say, can you believe that this trash is going on around us and we're not doing anything about it? A true, um, you know, abolishment of slavery, abolishment abolitionist movement happened with the book uncle tom's cabin and it also did with the sound of freedom the body of jesus woke up to it they said hey this is the cause of christ if the body of jesus doesn't answer this nobody else will and then people started looking where are the ministries that are already doing something like that and then boom there we were and we were there the whole time there just really wasn't a voice for us and there really wasn't a platform uh, for voices of ministries like mine that are rescuing kids all over the world. Before it was just like, yeah, that's too ugly. And I don't want to be a part of that. Now people are like, no, I have to be a part of this because the same people that are after those kids are after our kids as well. So we spoke there and it was good. And then we, we left there and we did a road trip and we went, well, can to I ask you about that real quick? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if we've ever talked about that, that publicly, but you went before, Congress, and this was going to be like a two-day uh, deal. And uh, can you just kind of um, bring us in? Because that was such a big deal for you and your ministry. But it's also a, this was a major moment in the kingdom of God because the Lord used you to do something very significant. Uh, it, would you be willing just to tell us a little bit about what the Lord did when you went before Congress? Well, yeah, I was given uh, protocols. And of course, there's lots of protocols when you go, and, you know, you don't just go up there and do whatever you want to do. You know, they, they, it's a big deal. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a pretty daggum big deal, especially for a guy from Joshua, Texas, right? 
And so, but I was amazed that after hearing all the speakers on the very first day, all the testimony, um, all those things, I, I got to noticing about two, three hours into it. And then it was confirmed as many as 10 hours into it that no one has ever mentioned pornography in this entire thing. And then I was briefed and I was told, okay, Mr. Brewer, here's part of, you know, the scenario here. Listen, you're here to talk about trafficking. Um, we're staying away from anything to do with pornography because um, the, you know, we just don't want to talk about that. That will be another forum. So, and I was just sitting there and I said, okay. So I get up there and the very first thing I said was pornography is trafficking. And if you're watching pornography, you are either watching a crime scene or you are funding a crime scene. And I've been hearing all these testimonies now, and not one single person has mentioned it. In fact, I have been warned not to mention it. And I'm here to tell you that a storm is coming to Washington, D.C. that is going to uproot um, this mess that is in Washington, D.C. that is connected to pornography, and it is also going to shut the power down. And that was the first bull out of the chute that I left whenever I came up there, because I didn't care if I ever got invited back or not. I wanted to speak the truth and I wanted to represent Jesus. And I wanted to be a voice for these children all over the world. Darren, um, as God is my witness. Um, and when I left there that day, a few hours after I left there, this storm came from nowhere. Uh, a storm that was not predicted to come in and it set right on top of Washington DC and it uprooted all those big grand trees that are on Capitol uh, Hill wow. and, it shut, and it also shut down the power. And I didn't even know I was prophesying. I just was just de declaring a word. And so, yeah, it was, it was extremely powerful. And uh, I got on the radar of some really nefarious people and um, <laughs> I was warned by a bunch of secret squirrels and uh, after that, not only did it not hurt us, but it actually projected us. And I just spoke at another international summit against human trafficking in Cancun this last week. That is so incredible. And, and, and hey, when you were there, I mean, sometimes when you testify before Congress, um, there's a, people are applauding you. But I think that there was one gentleman that actually kind of challenged you and asked you, um, what right does the church have? to be a part of this rescue scene. This is a government, this is a problem that, that concerns justice or injustice. This is a governmental problem. This is a justice problem. This is not, this is not a church problem. How, you know, what right do you as a pastor have any business in coming into other countries and rescuing children from mafias and cartels? Uh, and, and you were asked something like that, weren't you? I was, I was pastor Darren. And what was your, what was your answer? I mean, what <laughs> right, what right does the church have? Shouldn't we just be in our buildings on our, isn't our role as the church to sing songs on Sunday and then, you know, go, in, you know, and be moral vote Republican, but that that's basically it. How dare we be involved in the rescuing of, of, of children? Yeah. And I did answer it and I pushed back extremely hard and I said, well, first and foremost, let me tell you, any place where the church is not activated and involved in this, the government is not activated and involved in it. The only reason, any, only reason any governments on the planet Earth right this second are actually going after kids, if they are, is because the body of Jesus is demanding it to be so. Hollywood doesn't demand it to be so. The other religions of the world do not demand it to be so. The communists, the humanists, the secularists, they don't demand it to be so. It's only the voice and the activation of the body of Jesus that makes it happen. Pastor Darren, I told him, I said, sir, I can tell you this, that in the history of the planet earth, if you go back to, you know, all the way back to the, you know, if you go back to the Egyptians and then you go into the Babylonian empire, the Medes, the Persians, the Greeks, the Romans, and so on, there has never been found one single orphanage there in all the archeological study they've ever done. There's not one single old folks home, not one single orphanage, not one single soup kitchen, not one single hospital available to the people until the gospel of Jesus Christ showed up. Once you find Christians entering into Roman society, then you start to see these things begin to form. So they never become a part of the government unless the church insists it to be so. And I said, I know this, if I go to sleep, you guys will not do your job. And by the way, where are all the governments of the world uh, rescuing children? You know, I was, Pastor Darren, I was just in Mexico, and I want to tell you this, in the entire nation, 
the entire nation of Mexico. There's only 13 facilities. There's now 14 because I opened up another one over the weekend. But so, so we'll say 14 facilities that take in trafficked children. There's not wow. 4,000. There's wow. 14, and we have four of them. Wow. I, I actually have four of them. There's less than 100 children in the system. Out of tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not possibly millions of kids that are trafficked through through Mexico, there's less than 100 people that the government claims that have ever been trafficked. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So if the body of Jesus does not step up, there's nobody else coming. So that's what I told him. Wow. That is amazing. Woo. <laughs> that is so awesome. That is so good. Now, um, again, we, we want to talk about this, this trip because it was so significant what, what you guys just did in Mexico and you just got back. But can you, um, can you kind of turn the lights on for people that are watching this and they have really no idea what is taking place in Mexico right now with these with these children? Well, yes, sir, I can. And I would just say this. This what I'm about to say is not hyperbole. It's not a, it's not an exaggeration. This is the truth. However bad that you might suspect trafficking is, it is so much worse than that because the trafficking industry fueled by pornography and funded by pornography and actually organized through cartels and working in tandem with governments throughout the world is so good at what they do that there are more slaves right this second in bondage, right this second, than there has ever been slaves in the history of all of, uh, of, all of humanity. Now, I want you to think about that. How many slaves has there been in the history of humanity? There's been millions. There's more than that enslaved right now, right this second. Um, all of these studies have been done by very, very, very credible people talking about the number of slaves throughout the world. And it is, it's, you know, you would say, well, slavery is not a part of, of our culture. Well, okay, well, let's talk about other cultures. It is a part of other cultures throughout the world. Um, in, in any Muslim nation, um, slavery is allowed and it's going on. And now they're called house servants or they're called indentured servants. They are servants and they are not free. And it always turns into something sexual. Mm -hmm. Um, now if you, if we go on to this side of the world, our, we say, well, it's not a part of this. No, but pornography is a part of our culture. It's a part of our every single lot day lives. It's a part of the sexuality of our entire culture. It is fueled by slavery. There is not a single little girl that has ever been born that says, hey, when I grow up, I want to be a prostitute and I want to be exploited on television. Mm -hmm. the, the process that has to happen in order for porn stars to be porn stars is so dark and so nefarious. Um, and it's calculated and it's real. On the Texas, uh, on the Tex-Mex border, we do a tremendous work. The trafficking that is involved there, and I think I lost you guys. I'm still here. Can you hear okay. me? Yep. Okay. Thank you, brother. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, the trafficking that is on the border, I can tell you, is way worse than what anybody thinks. And we're actually involved in it. And it's little kids. So... Pastor Darren, in a nutshell, there are three reasons why anybody is enslaved. There's three reasons why that there are trafficking all throughout the planet Earth and that hundreds of millions of people are being bought and sold every single day. Number one is for work labor. Number two is for sexual uh, purposes. And number three is for body parts. And those are the three markets, um, you know, it's, it's for their organs. Those are the three markets throughout the world. And again, if the body of Jesus doesn't answer it, nobody else is going to. Wow. 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 It's so it, it's so sobering. And uh, and it, there's such a wake up call. And like you said, just this last year, it's like th there's been a massive awakening coming uh, to the earth, to the body of Christ, to mainstream media on these on these matters. It's been happening for generations. But finally, it's like the Lord is saying enough is enough. And one of the things that's so cool is to see that the people that are making the biggest difference, they're not doing it for for votes. 
They're not doing it uh, to get into another uh, four-year political cycle. This is the body of Christ, the ecclesia, uh, the mystery, the remnant, whatever term you want to use. Man, the people of God are coming onto the scene. And uh, Troy, you and your wife, your family, your ministry, you guys, this is not a new story for you. Uh, you've been doing this for for a while with a, with such an amazing track record. Yeah, you know, when I first became a pastor in 2009, um, uh, this whole conversation of sexual trafficking, and especially what was happening in Seattle, here on I five going in uh, uh, into Oregon and, and into Canada, and then all the way uh, down into Mexico. I remember hearing about what was going on. And it so bothered me that I began to do an investigation of ministries, trying to find ministries to partner with. Uh, and we found some interesting um, partnerships. But one of the things that I discovered is that the majority of, of, of nonprofits that we were discovering were using all of their efforts to bring awareness. Uh, but very little was being done uh, to, to rescue, uh, to prosecute, to bring rehabilitation, discipleship. Uh, uh, and restoration. And so it was almost as if the majority of, of these um, nonprofits that are good nonprofits were acting almost more like media agencies, more so than uh, than the hands and feet of Jesus to come in to bring deliverance. And I think that we need all of the above, option D. Uh, but we also do need people that are actually going in and acting as, as the body of Christ to actually save and to deliver and that's what you guys just did. So you just got back on your second redemption road trip. What did what did Jesus do? <laughs> well, uh, in in tandem with the thought that you just now gave, I, I I would like to also add to that before I tell you. So awareness yeah, yeah. is a big deal. Awareness is a big deal. Rescue is a big deal, and then raising the kids is a big deal. Wow. And the thing that we found out, and see, okay, let me say this: we got the cart before you know we got the cart before the horse, and it, it, it's. Uh, Pastor Darren, it's like everything I do is born breach, everything <laughs> like, okay, so we didn't start the church and then start the outreach. We started the outreach and then it started the church, right? <laughs> right. And so that's very much kind of how I roll sure. is we get involved in something and then we build the organization behind the thing that we're actually involved in. So what, what we found out is that it is so uncommon and so rare for the rescuers to raise the kids. And I, wow. I, wow. I didn't imagine that. And once I went to DC, I found out that there's very few organizations on the planet earth that do all three, that bring awareness, that actually rescue kids, and then actually take on the responsibility of raising them. So we have over 4,000 children under our care at this single moment wow. right now. Praise God. Wow. And that is where the Mamba Jamba is. That's that's what you have to do is it's great to rescue these kids, but you can't just turn them back over to the government. You can't turn them over to some kind of a system where they're just going to disappear. You have to take on the responsibility of seeing to it that those kids go into a family, that they go into a home and that they are raised. And then once they are, uh, you know, and how they cycle out is so important. You, you, you can't just kick them out when they turn 18 years old. If they have to stay until they're 30 because of their trauma and because of their issues, why would you care? The reason why that that's a problem is because it requires an open-ended commitment. Wow. That's really scary. Wow. And I say you have to have these open-ended commitments. If you take care of a kid for two years or if you take care of a kid for 20 years, you have to not care. And you just have to be committed to that cause. Wow. And so there are very, very, very few organizations on the planet Earth that bring awareness, that actually rescue, and then actually raise them. So, again, we started we started rescuing them and raising them. And just re as of recently, we become the kind of people that are actually bringing awareness as well. But because, man, we, we want people to know this is real, but we also want people to know that there's an answer That's right. and, that, and that we can see kids transform. All right. So to answer your question, sir, um, what did Jesus do? Jesus rescued a 14 year old little girl and a 16 year old little girl um, from the most horrendous and terrible um, organization that we have recently come across. Jesus helped us to get five cartel guys arrested, which those guys wow. never get arrested. Wow. One guy, one government official arrested. 
wow. in broad daylight in front of everybody. And then it also came out that there are no facilities to put these kids in. And um, and the reason for that is, is because it's nearly impossible to bring compliance, which we have. A, we have a huge team of Mexican lawyers that's really good at bringing that kind of compliance. And then it came out that the only organizations that are taking care of these kids once once a kid is set free is Christian organizations because the government provides zero funding. And I have to say wow. that again, wow. zero, 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 zero funding. They police the organizations like us and they bring the hammer down upon us and they require us uh, to have hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of compliance, but they do not help in any way whatsoever. And then it came out that there are many, and I don't know exactly what the number is, but just in Cancun, we we found out of 10 children that because there is no facilities to put them in that was rescued in some kind of operation where the cartel guys were killed, and then they didn't know what to do with these kids, so they just put them in jail. Oh, man. And those kids, those kids are sitting in jail right now, and we're about to get those 10 different kids. The lid came off of all of that just this last weekend, and I watched the whole thing blow up, and it is truly – Truly a miracle. Truly a miracle. That is incredible. That is so <laughs> awesome. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Let's go. <laughs> that is so awesome. The, the the children that are in the in in this prison. How how old are these kids? Yeah, I honestly I don't know, but yeah. they're kids. But let me say this: they're not like in the general population of a prison because there's really good guys in the police, and there's good guys in the on the prosecuting side of the Mexican government, and there's good guys, um, uh, you know, that are that are out there busting these guys, and so they put them there because they have to be protected. You can't send them home because there's a hit on them and they want, they want their little voices silenced. And so they're actually wow. there for their protection, but it's, I mean, it's terrible. These kids are in, they're in a jail, they're in a prison. So we're about to get them out and bro, you're going to have to go with me down to Cancun. You're going to have to see this facility. Uh, we just, we just spent a hundred thousand dollars of the weekend down there uh, getting it ready, getting in into compliance. We're about to have 12 kids there. We have another three in Mexico city and um, we're, we're brother. It's now the government is going to start turning these kids over to us because now there's national attention on it. It's, it's truly remarkable because they didn't even admit up until this last weekend, the Mexican government did not even admit they, they were insistent that there is no trafficking in Cancun. They've cleaned it all up. And now they're saying, no, there is. And praise God, man, there's a godly prosecutor down there who's like, no, I'm going to prosecute these jokers and I am going to turn them over to Troy and to his team. And we're going to get this thing done. So this is significant because uh, on your first redemption road trip, um, you guys went and you brought a media team with you and wherever you went, you would go, you would do these lives and you would give these reports and it pulled, it, it drew a lot of attention. And oh, so uh, the eyes of the nations were on you as you're in Mexico. And then all of a sudden um, the, the Mexican government uh, realized we can't ignore this guy. And, <laughs> and, and so on your last trip, there was some very interesting connections that took place between you and the government. Is that right? Oh, it's so right, brother. There's a guy by the name of Fernando Flores, and he is a, so some people would say he's a mayor in Mexico City, but it doesn't translate right because there are a whole bunch of provinces of Mexico City and they, they go all the way to the border. So his section is huge. And this guy, this guy himself, Whenever, whenever they started rescuing kids and whenever they started shutting down the cartel, because this guy fights the cartel, he was like, there's no facilities to put them in. So he built 22 himself and he wow. funds it. He funds it out of, out of his businesses. Wow. And so, so they're not even a part of the government. You know, he's just like, okay, well, we got to take care of all these kids. I, ju I just recently started partnering with him to help take care of his 22 facilities wow. and to love on, and to love on those kids as well. But this guy, Fernando, he is something else. He, and he's something like a Donald Trump of Mexico. He's, he's a very, very, very successful businessman that's never been involved in politics before. And he got involved and he started cleaning it up and he's doing it. There's another lady by the name of Sandra 
And Sandra Cuevas is a, she is on the opposite end of, she's literally the polar opposite as far as like Republican and Democrat, but yet she has also taken on this cause and the area that she's in has the highest trafficking of any other area. And it goes all the way to the Tex-Mex border, uh, which is Acuna. And we do a huge work there. And uh, she took me to the angel of independence, which is their national monument. And she took me up to the top of it and she's like, Pastor Troy, will you pray for all the children that are being that are are being sold here in Mexico City? And we went up there, Scott, and we made declarations. And she said, Troy, please help me. And she asked me, she said, Is it true that you guys have rescued more than 10,000 kids? I said, Yeah, it is true. And she's like, I want to do that. And she's like, pray for me. I'm not a part of this. I don't want to be a part of it. And she's had all kinds of death threats, all kinds of mess. And she's a brave woman. So I'm, I'm very, very, very excited about those amazing connections. That, that is, it is so significant. It's also so significant to see um, how you guys are utilizing media to bring redemption. And to see the Lord flip the script. And that's really what's taking place right now. Uh, this is not a new conversation, and yet the conversation has radically changed. And what would you say to me, it would seem, and, I, and I'm not involved to the degree that you are, um, but man, 2023 was a, was a significant breakthrough year. And, and, it, and it looks like things it's not that that breakthrough is over it feels like there's like a shift and an acceleration that's coming in this conversation to the degree that you are involved in a film right now uh, that's going to be coming out um next year and uh, can you tell us a little bit about that ah yes it's called dream and if everybody just looks up dream film if you just google search dream film you can actually watch the trailer and uh yeah, there's a guy by the name of Ben Pauling and his brother Samuel Pauling. They contacted me. Uh, they were hooked up through Todd White's ministry. They're filmmakers in California. Uh, they're successful young men. And uh, they were inspired by some of my stories. And they put together their own story and uh, built this whole incredible script and uh, used uh, some of my stories to inspire them for some of their stories. And uh, they're actually using the funding of that to actually fund saving kids. So it's not just going to bring awareness like the great success. And I'm so grateful for the sound of freedom, but I want to, if I can, if I can just say this and you know, I, I I'm not saying anything bad about that movie because I'm so grateful for it. It changed things. Okay. All the money that came into that did not go to fund, um, you know, um, ministries or to, to save kids out of sexual trafficking. It went to angel studios, which is the Mormon church. And the Mormon church is not famous for saving kids. That's not what they do. And so these guys saw that and just said, hey, man, there needs to be a place in the body of Jesus where a film not only brings awareness, but it actually rescues kids. And these guys are serious about this. And they partnered with me. And they're actually going to have me be in a scene, which is kind of cool. And uh, I have no idea what that's about yet. I haven't, I, they haven't told me yet, but I'm really looking forward to it. I hope it's a I hope it's a, a Western scene and I and I hope it involves you coming into a saloon, even though that has nothing to do with the topic. I'm sure there's gotta be some sort of way to it's gotta be. Yeah, I'll be praying into that. Uh Thanks, man. hey, listen, it's it's the most wonderful time of the year. It's it's the it's the time of, of giving and generosity. And we uh we partner with your ministry every year. Uh, to to give and to sow into the redemption and rescue of children around the world through your through your ministry, and uh, it was an honor just to have you in Seattle. We did what we called the Night Under the Stars with Troy Brewer, and it was just you uh, sitting by a fireplace with your cowboy hat on, your jacket on, and a guitar, and you just sat there and you just uh, you treated us as though we were all just friends sitting around a fire, and you just sat there and talked about the prophetic significance of, of, of the stars and God's creation and, and his body. And, and, um, and, and you were, you, you would be telling jokes one minute, minute and then revelating another minute. And, um, and man, we were, we were able to raise over $10,000 towards wow. the, uh, the, towards the rescue of, of children. Um, and man, it was such a significant night, but, uh, I, you know, there are people that are watching this. They didn't get to necessarily be a part of that night, but they want to be a part of your ministry and they want, they want their money 
uh, to matter. I mean, I think that's what we all want. Every day we spend uh, our our money on things that that don't that don't matter. You can get on Amazon right now and 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 be inundated by by the world's best marketing geniuses. And they're and Amazon right now is just a bunch of hooks with bait. And and basically, there's a whole bunch of things there that don't matter. Is there's a bunch of things there that people? I mean, millions, and millions, hundreds of millions of dollars being spent on stuff that is being built by children in in foreign by by Sorry. by by child slaves. And so, uh, for a lot of us, we're actually we're actually funding slavery without even realizing it. And so this is an opportunity not to shame you, but to invite you to give your money into something that really matters. And that's towards the rescue of children, the prosecution of the bad guys, because as Pastor Troy was just saying, most of these foreign governments that they're working with uh, overseas don't don't give money for the prosecution of the bad guys. And uh, and Troy Brewer, your your ministry actually funds the prosecution of these of these guys, as well as the rehabilitation and 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 these these really aren't orphanages. These are these are homes. These are these are mm-hmm. families. These kids don't don't have an orphan mentality. You know, they call right. you they call you dad. Many of these children have Brewer as their as their last name. Many of these children, you and your wife have actually personally named. And so I would just encourage people to um, to take a moment and, and even just to pray and ask the Lord, hey, how can we really intentionally and sacrificially give uh, in a way where it's really gonna re- really really gonna matter? And one of the things that I've noticed is whenever whenever I give, it, my heart gets attached um, to the gift because where your treasure is, there your heart is. And so even as people that that have concern you're going to find once you sow into this now now you're, you're going to, that currency is, is going to attach your heart to this ministry and all of a sudden you're really going to care a lot deeper and you're also going to know that you are a part of the solution and no longer a part of the problem so uh, pastor troy how do we uh partner with what you and your teams are doing in the nations this holiday season wow well, you can go to odx.tv and you can actually see the videos that we just filmed while we were down there on the redemption road trip part. And then you can actually give towards that. And so uh, we are ongoing efforts in Chiapas, Mexico. Uh, let's see, where all are we at? We're in, we're in Nepal. We're in India. This is, this is where we all have kids under our care right at this moment and where we have at least 20 rescue centers now throughout the planet earth. And uh, we're in Nepal, we're in India, we are in Uganda, we are in Kenya, we're in Rwanda. Um, On this side of the world, we're in Texas, we're in Mexico, we're in Belize, we're in Guatemala, we're in Nicaragua, uh, we are in um, Brazil and Colombia and also, um, well, Peru. And then on the other side of the world, you know, we're in places like Cambodia. So if you want to give it towards those things and say, hey, um, you know what? I actually want to make a difference. Um, You can give right there. Just go to odx.tv. You can also find me at troybrewer.com. And you can go to either one of those places and you can click on the tab and you can give right there. You can also call us as well if you'd like to talk to us about it. That's what I do. I'm old school, and and I, I'll call your team. And this is really cool for those. Uh, there's there's church leaders, pastors, there's business leaders that are that are watching here. Even if you uh, if your if your company organization needs to give to a non-religious organization, uh, they're set up for that as well. And so, um, and, and what you can do, you can literally call them, and you can say, Hey, listen, we want to fund. A children's home. You can call them. Uh, this is what we did. We 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 called and talked to uh, Daryl Knight over on your team. Said, listen, we want to build a school, and and we uh, partnered with you in the Legacy School there in Uganda. You can just call them up and say, hey, uh, maybe your family wants to. You can call them and say, hey, my family, we want to put in three wells. We want to do this as a family. So you can actually do that. You can call their team, and um, and then you can. Uh, you can put something under the tree that's symbolic of a well and, and share with your children. Hey, listen, this is what we did as a family. 
And these guys are so good. They they can send you they send you pictures and 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 they they're always celebrating the wins of what Jesus is doing um, overseas. And uh, Pastor Troy, such an honor to call you a friend, um, to hear uh, uh, these stories, which are so uh, significant um, and and at times heartbreaking. I know this last year we we laughed a lot a lot together. Uh, we also uh, cried uh, together. There was some some massive ups, some massive downs. But you guys are making a massive difference, and we celebrate you and your team. Uh, and man, it was such an honor to be able to capture this conversation, even as like a, a bookend to 2023. And I'm so excited about what Jesus is going to be doing through you, your family, your ministry in 2024. Oh, thank you so much, Pastor Darren. It's, it has been an incredible year. The lid came off in such a huge way. King Jesus wants to rescue these kids. He's blessing everybody that is a part of this thing. Um, and I'm so grateful. Thank you, sir, for being such a big part of everything. And it, it's it's a great, terrible privilege. And that's what I call it. It's a privilege, but it's a terrible privilege. It's not for the faint of heart. It's for people who really love Jesus. And I'm so glad that you do, my friend. Thank you, sir. Awesome.